All right, welcome back. So in the previous video, we implemented this My Wallet component over here for our Funk Token Wallet. And we got it to show our Ethereum Wallet address, our Ethereum balance, and our Funk Token balance. So the next thing we want to do is implement this Send Tokens component. So we can actually send Funk Tokens to other Ethereum addresses. So let's go over to our code. And let's open up the send tokens component and as you can see uh, it's basic pretty similar to the wallet info component we've got our markup in the template section and then our javascript um, in the script section so we've got two variables address and amount and the way we tie these to the inputs in the interface is with this v model directive right here and then just give it the name of the variable. And then down here, we use the same thing, but then we've got this dot number. And all that does is make sure that the value coming in is actually a number um, because by default HTML, when you try and send this value, um, it's just gonna be cast to a string. So we wanna cast it straight to a number. And then don't worry about this right here, except that all this means is that, um, so this refers to that send button right here. And all this means is that when I click this button, I want this uh, method to be called. So this send tokens method. And we can actually define any method we want to call through the markup in this method section over here. And we've already defined it and it basically does nothing. So we want to make it do something. So we want to make it send the amount that we specify to the address that we specify. So first thing we want to do is bring in this, the contract object that we created in the last video. So we have access to that. And in this send tokens method, uh, we can access whatever is entered in those input variables by accessing these variables right here. So we're also going to do some error checking. One, make sure first that the address that we're sending to is a valid Ethereum address. And we also want to check to make sure that uh, the amount is an actual number and it's uh, greater than zero. So first let's check to see if the address is valid. And we can do that with a nice little utility function that's included with the Web3 library. So uh, if Web3 is address, or we want to check if it's not an address. So if this returns false, given the address that's in that input, we want to send an alert box and say, invalid address and yeah, we don't need to capitalize that and then we want to clear out that box so they can have a, a chance to type it in again so this dot ADDR equals null and we don't want to continue any further so we're going to return and this breaks us out of that function so let's go ahead and save this Let's try and first let's try and send nothing. Okay, invalid address. Let's send something crazy, invalid address. And let's just copy an address. All right, no errors and it continues. So let's continue on. Let's check this, num this amount um, input. So the next step we want to check to see if it's an actual number. And to do that, um, we're going to import a nice uh, little library called Lodash. It's actually a very popular JavaScript library because JavaScript is very powerful, but it doesn't include a lot of stuff that you would wish it had. So Lodash fills that gap by providing a bunch of useful utility functions. Um, and lodash is often represented by this underscore, aka a lodash. So we're going to import 
the low dash from the low dash library and I already have this installed um, so we have access to that so now we're going to check using this is number function so we're going to check if it's not a number or if this is number function returns false for this amount we want to fire an alert we also want to fire an alert if this dot amount is less than or equal to zero so fire off invalid amount this dot amount will reset it and then we will return because we don't want to continue any further so let's save this and go back so let's copy a real address because otherwise it'll fail and try and send invalid amount let's send some crazy stuff invalid amount let's send zero invalid amount Let's send negative 35 invalid amount and let's try and send 500 all right that works so all our error checking is done so now we need to actually send these tokens and if you remember back in our ERC 20 token um, example all ERC 20 tokens have a transfer method and because um, our solidity contract on the blockchain has that method our JavaScript representation of that contract will also have that method so we are going to reference this contract object and then call the transfer method transfer method and the transfer method takes an address so this dot and it takes an amount and because we're doing everything through MetaMask we need to do it asynchronously so it's going to call in the background we need to pass a callback function so we'll get an error and a response back and the response if this is successful is just going to be a hash or um, a transaction has hash representing that transaction on the blockchain so we're not really going to do anything with it um, we'll just console the log the response so that should work uh, we should probably check if an error occurred as well So if not error, we'll log the response. Otherwise, we'll log the error. All right, that looks good. Save that. And let's attempt to send some funk tokens. That's not what I wanted to do. copy address and then let's send like a hundred thousand because we already have what like a hundred million we don't need that many funk tokens so we'll send this to that address hit send and something happened we just Well, that's odd. Contract is not defined. That is because we did not import the contract. So let's make sure we import that contract. Uh, 
Okay, so we have the contract. And one other thing we want to do is if there's an error, we want to return. Oh, if there's no error, we want to return. Um, we also want to clear out those inputs. So this dot amount. Equal this dot amount equals null. So we want to do that if there's no error, and we also want to do that if there is an error. So we just want to clear it out so we know something happened. All right, let's try this again. I'll leave this up just to check. Go ahead and copy this address. Send 10,000 funk tokens. Invalid opcode. Now, this is odd. I see what's happening. So we actually selected this account. Um, there's not enough gas in there to do anything. So we need to go back to this account. Let's refresh just to make sure we're using the right account. So we're using the right account. We've got some ether in there. Copy the address that has no ether in there. Let's try this one more time. Let's send this. All right, cool. Now it's going to ask us to um, submit or reject because we're actually working with our own wallet and we don't want you don't want to be able to pull ether from people's wallets without them um, accepting it so we're going to accept that's going to clear as you can see we got the transaction hash um, returned um, and then if we refresh this You can see the ETH balance has changed a little bit, but we made a mistake. This number represented, or this number passed in, when we pass it into the transfer um, function, that number needs to be in um, the, the way denomination. So, um, like I s mentioned before in our contract, um, our tokens are represented much like Ethereum is represented. So everything is transferred in way um, rather than Ethereum. Um, so in our contract, everything is transferred in that smaller denomination. Um, so you need to actually convert that so that you're representing the right amount when you send it to the contract. So we can easily do this using the Web3 um, from, oh, actually, two way, the two way function, um, two way from Ether, because our um, token is represented the exact same way and then we'll send it that way so let's again save that try this one more time copy send accept we got the transaction hash 
if we reset, aha. So now you can see a significant change has happened in our token balance. And if we actually switch to the address we sent it to, it's not going to refresh. So if we refresh, you can see that that address now has 10,000 funk tokens. But it would be nice is if once we sent this, our balance in our wallet component actually updated. And we can do that by listening to the events that are registered on the Ethereum blockchain through our ERC20 token. Remember, there are two, there are a couple of events in those tokens. There is an amount event and then there's a transfer event. So if we listen to the transfer event, we can check whether something's changed and go ahead and update the balance accordingly. And we're gonna do that in the next video. So if you like this video, remember to hit like and subscribe and tell your friends about it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.